The Michael reaction is a specific type of conjugate addition to an alpha-beta unsaturated carbonyl compound, or its equivalent, such as an alpha-beta unsaturated nitrile. Conjugate addition is the result of nucleophilic attack at the beta position of an alpha-beta unsaturated system. This can occur because the beta carbon is electron poor, as highlighted through resonance. As the alkene pi bonding electrons move towards the carbonyl, the carbonyl pi bonding electrons can be displaced onto oxygen. This leaves a formal positive charge at the beta position, so the resonance hybrid has a partial positive charge at the beta position. And similar resonance occurs with related compounds. For instance, alpha beta unsaturated esters, amides, nitriles, and nitro compounds. Powerful nucleophiles add directly to the carbonyl carbon. For a review of reactions like this, you may be interested in re-watching the videos on the Grignard reaction of aldehydes and ketones, and on the reactions of carboxylic acid derivatives with lithium aluminum hydride or Grignard reagents. However, weaker nucleophiles add to the beta position. One type of weak nucleophile is an enolate that is stabilized by resonance involving two electron withdrawing groups, such as carbonyls. When such a nucleophile adds to the beta position of an unsaturated compound, a new carbon-carbon bond is formed, and this process is referred to as the Michael reaction. The nucleophile is termed a Michael donor. Remember that the nucleophile is the compound that can form a stabilized enolate. The unsaturated compound is called a Michael acceptor, and the product of this reaction is a 1,5-dicarbonyl compound. The reaction begins with the removal of the most acidic proton in the system by the base. The most acidic proton in the system is bound to the position alpha to two carbonyls. The removal of this proton yields an enolate. While there may be more than one alpha position among the substrates used, there is typically only a single alpha position that is activated by two carbonyls, and that center will be significantly more acidic than the others because deprotonation there yields an enolate with extended resonance delocalization. Due to its resonance stabilization, this enolate is a milder nucleophile than those that add directly to the carbonyl carbon. Consequently, it is drawn to the beta position instead. The alkene pi bond is pushed toward the carbonyl, and the carbonyl pi bond is displaced onto oxygen. Notice that a new carbon-carbon bond is formed. In addition to forming that new carbon-carbon sigma bond, a new enolate has been formed as well. But this new enolate is more basic due to its lesser resonance stabilization. So it readily acquires a proton so as to yield a neutral product. Now let's turn our attention to some specific examples. In the following example, diethylmalonate was chosen as the Michael donor, and methyl vinyl ketone acts as the Michael acceptor. You may recognize diethylmalonate since it was used in the malonic ester synthesis video. Although both methyl vinyl ketone and diethylmalonate have alpha protons, only those of diethylmalonate are alpha to two carbonyls. 
These are therefore the most acidic protons in the system and can be most readily removed by ethoxide. Notice that the alkoxide base has an alkyl group that matches that of the esters, so that transesterification is not a complicating factor. The resonance stabilized enolate that was formed in this way then adds to the beta carbon of methyl vinyl ketone, forming a new carbon carbon bond in the process. The alpha beta unsaturation is displaced, as is the carbonyl pi bond. This new enolate is more basic since it has one fewer stabilizing carbonyl. Consequently, it readily deprotonates ethanol to afford the Michael reaction product. We can stop at this point if desired, but another option is to hydrolyze and decarboxylate the diethylmalonate moiety. If we choose to do this, a separate step will be used in which the Michael reaction product is heated with aqueous acid. This first hydrolyzes both of the esters. And the dye acid that results exhibits intramolecular hydrogen bonding as highlighted in this diagram. As the intramolecular hydrogen bond grows stronger, the carbonyl pi bond can be used to deprotonate the neighboring acid. This results in the formation of a new carbon-oxygen pi bond, as well as the cleavage of a carbon-carbon bond. Notice that one carbon of the substrate was lost in the form of carbon dioxide and this new reaction product is obtained in its enol form. The resultant enol tautomerizes spontaneously to yield the final decarboxylation product, which still possesses a 1,5-dicarbonyl. This product could also be referred to as a delta keto acid, because C2 is the alpha position relative to the acid, C3 is the beta position, C4 is the gamma position, and C5 is the delta position. Note that this hydrolysis decarboxylation sequence is reminiscent of the end game of the malonic ester synthesis and you may wish to refer back to that video on the malonic ester synthesis to see the connection more clearly. In this next example, ethyl acetoacetate is used as the Michael donor, and the Michael acceptor is ethyl acrylate. The reaction begins with the deprotonation of the most acidic position which is the only position between two electron withdrawing carbonyls. A stabilized enolate results. The stabilized enolate undergoes conjugate addition to the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl to afford a new enolate. And this newly formed enolate is of much greater basicity, so it deprotonates ethanol to conclude the Michael reaction. Yet again, we have the choice of stopping here at the end of the Michael reaction or proceeding to a separate second step in which hydrolysis and decarboxylation will occur. If we choose the latter, heating an aqueous acid first hydrolyzes both esters. While the resultant hydrolysis product does contain two acids, only one can undergo decarboxylation. It is the acid with the beta keto group that engages in six-membered intramolecular hydrogen bonding, and it is this carboxylic acid that will be susceptible to decarboxylation.
decarboxylation requires a beta carbonyl so that the electrons from the breaking carbon-carbon bond can be funneled in to that electron withdrawing group. As the decarboxylation progresses, the product is provided in its enol form. Notice that yet again, one carbon of the substrate is lost in the form of carbon dioxide. Tautomerization now provides the product in its keto form. And this product still contains the 1,5-dicarbonyl that is the hallmark of a Michael reaction. As in the last example, this product could also be termed a delta keto acid. Notice that this hydrolysis decarboxylation sequence is reminiscent of the end game of the acetoacetic ester synthesis. And you may wish to review the video on the acetoacetic ester synthesis to see this connection more clearly. In summary, the Michael reaction is a carbon-carbon bond forming reaction that occurs through conjugate addition of a stabilized enolate to an alpha-beta unsaturated compound. The Michael donor is the nucleophile, in other words, the stabilized enolate, while the alpha-beta unsaturated compound is the Michael acceptor and the reaction results in a 1,5-dicarbonyl. With Michael donors that contain at least one ester, it is possible to hydrolyze and decarboxylate after the Michael reaction is complete. This, however, entails a separate step, which is not formally a part of the Michael reaction, but it does provide additional synthetic versatility. The preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.